what does it mean to pray in the spirit? A lot of people bring that up, but unfortunately, a lot of people get it wrong in their understanding of what it actually means to pray in the spirit. Now, many will be surprised to know that there's only three times in the Bible where this phrase is used to pray in the spirit. Now, in the spirit is used several times, which also helps us understand what does that exactly mean. So let's look at first the three times that it's used, and then we're going to find out exactly how it's used and so that we won't make the mistake of trying to ascribe to it something that's not intended by the scriptures. And so, and so let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 14, where we see this brought up. Paul says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So now understanding Paul's point here is that there is no understanding with his mind. And so the question or the problem is about this issue of a lack of understanding. The solution will be to pray with understanding. And look what he says. He says, what is the outcome? What then is the solution? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with my mind also. Now he also goes on to say that I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the mind also. Now the question is, is he saying with or in? Now, it doesn't really matter if he's saying with or in. Uh, the phrase is still understood the same, whether it be to or ain, uh, the phrase in the spirit or with the spirit is still there. The prop or the point is when we talk about this, Paul is trying to get across that when we talk about doing something in the spirit, in this case, praying in the spirit, he means praying under the power, the direction, the guise in the power, with the power, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Another passage that comes up is Jude 20. And look at it. It says, beloved, but you beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And so so Jude is writing to tell them as a collective, you all to do so for others, praying or building up in the power with the power by the power through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we also see it brought up in Ephesians six. Now, there are those before we go to Ephesians six. There are those that would think that specifically 1 Corinthians 14 and even maybe Jude, that he's speaking of doing so in tongues. For some reason, people have ascribed in the spirit with being in tongues. That cannot be the case because one, we know that everyone cannot speak in tongues. And then also, does everyone, are we required to all pray in tongues? Because that's the notion here in Ephesians 6, 18. Look what he says, with all prayer and, pe and petition, pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view. And so is Paul saying that always, whenever you pray, you are to pray in tongues? That could not be what he's saying because he's saying with all prayers and petition, pray at all times. So we could not then turn around and say that Paul wants everyone to pray in tongues at all times. So then that would necessarily eliminate us praying in English, praying with an understanding because when we pray in tongues, do we know what we're saying? And so it eliminates even us praying with understanding, which goes against 1 Corinthians 14, and it goes against us praying in English. As a matter of fact, it also naturally goes against or eliminates us praying in public together. We could not pray together if we are to pray at all times in tongues, if that's what this means. But no, it's to pray under the power of the Holy Spirit. Now this makes sense. Nothing is foreclosed or prohibited if we take it, take the meaning of in the spirit to be in the power, by the power, by the power of the spirit, through the power of the spirit. So if you were to take this as with the help of the spirit, by the means of the spirit, through or directed by the spirit, that then makes sense. As a matter of fact, let's look at a couple of the passages, a couple of the times where we see in the spirit being brought up. And you'll notice that it could not mean in the spirit could not mean in tongues. For example, Matthew 22, 43, just type in this phrase, he said to them, then how does David in the spirit call him Lord? Is this David saying in tongues? No, by the power, through the power, by means of, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Luke 1, 17, it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and the power of life. So in this case, with the help of, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, we know that John the Baptist was given the Holy Spirit upon him to do just that not to do it in tongues, but by the power, by the guidance, by the direction, by the help, by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Luke 2, 27. And he came into the spirit, into the temple. Is he came, did, it, did he come in, the, in tongues? No, in the spirit, 
by the power of Acts 19.21. After these things, Paul finished, after we're finished, I'm sorry, Paul purposed in the spirit to go to Jerusalem. Is this Paul purposing in tongues? No, by the power of, with the aid of, with this and stuff, with the direction of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 9. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In other words, you are in the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. By the power of this of our God, by the power of the Spirit, with the aid of, with the direction of, with the leading of, the power of the Spirit. So here we see this is what Paul or the Bible any other time means. In the Spirit means by the means of, with the help of, with the aid of, with the direction of, by the power, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when we pray in the Spirit, we are praying in concert with the Holy Spirit by means of, with the direction of, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen.